when you're stubborn against the things that God is telling you to do, and God is saying go this way, and you know he's telling you to go this way, but you're fighting against it, you're stubborn against what God is telling you to do, it's saying that that is idolatry. Stubbornness is idolatry to the Lord. When you don't go the way that he wants you to go, and you're rebelling and you're stubborn, you are in witchcraft and you are in idolatry. And we both know that those people will not inherit the kingdom of God. And so what we want to really do is check ourselves internally. We have to check ourselves. Welcome to the plug. and we about to get going so I need you all to pay attention quiet lock in lock in because we about to move fast but we about to move really really good thank you for joining us summer um, we're gonna be we're gonna have a conversation up here together all right so let's really um, chop it up have you been to the flea market before yes has anybody else been to the flea market a lot of people y'all been to the flea market so when I was younger um, anytime we would go to South Carolina we would go to the flea market and in the flea market, like, the one thing I love about the flea market is that you can really bargain whatever deals that you want, right? And so I always used to want, like, pet birds, right? I wanted pet parakeets. I had pet birds, right? I, I had them trained and everything, like, they would just come fly to me. It was cool, like, right there on the shoulder, right? Yeah, it was kind of cool. Anyway, anybody ever had pet birds? No? Only me? Dang. I was the only child that? It was kind of like a thing. Like, it was a thing. But okay, maybe it wasn't a thing. Maybe it was just me and my friends. Anyway, my dad was able to bargain with the guy for the prices of the birds. And we was able to get them at a lower price. But if we would have went to PetSmart and we would have saw the birds and like, yo, we want these birds. I know it say $50 a bird. We want them. We'll give you 30 for it. PetSmart going to be on some, nah, bro, we ain't negotiating nothing. But at the flea market, you can negotiate, right? In the world that we live in, we can negotiate certain things, right? We can, there's certain laws that some people may agree with, you don't agree with. We can try to put laws in place, we can vote against laws, things like that, in a democracy. But in a kingdom, it ain't no negotiations. Whatever the king says goes, even if it's a bad king, if the king says it, it goes. One of the kings back in the day, even in the biblical time, see, who is this person, right? Like, what king did this to what people? Said, kill all of the baby males. Kill all of the baby males. That's what the king said. Kill all of the baby males. Who is that, Summer? Saul. Huh? No, wrong. Not Saul. Oh, Pharaoh. King Pharaoh and Moses, right? And this happened with King Herod and Jesus, which is a cool, like, analogy because Moses came to save his people. Jesus came to save his people. And he said, kill all of the males. Kill them. And that, whatever the king said, happened. And so he really wanted to happen. But... Praise God that we, we serve a God that has good laws. Somebody say amen. amen. We have a God that says good laws. And, but whatever the king says, if he's king over your life, that's what happens. We need to obey and abide by that. Um, let's jump in. I want us to read 1 Corinthians 6 verses 9 um, through 11. And it says this. You want to read it? All right, read that for me real quick. 1 Corinthians 6, verses 9. Start there. Read it loud, too, Summer. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous. Covetous. Covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Read that in verse 11 too. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but now you are sanctified, but you were just, you were, wait. Justified? But you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus, by, and by 
the spirit of your God. Amen. God. Good, good, good. So it named all those things, right? Idolaters, those folks will not enter into the kingdom of God, right? And it says, don't be deceived by that. Like, if you worship idols, if that's something that you do, like, you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. You're not going to see the kingdom of God on this earth. And if you don't inherit the kingdom of God now, you won't inherit it later, right? You, you got to inherit the kingdom of God right now. And so when we think of idolatry, we have a lot of different things that come into our mind. We have a lot of different things that come into our mind. And oftentimes we can worship people. You ever seen somebody worship somebody? Yes. You have like who? TikTok people. Those TikTok people? Like, <laughs> they'll be like Charlie Talk loud. Charlie D'Amelio and Addison Ray. You see them like fan pages on your feed. They like, fan bases be yeah. crazy, right? They they'll fan like, bases be real crazy. Oh, yeah, my idol is such and such and such. Yeah. And so we see this a lot with entertainers all the time. So there was a person that was back in the day who probably had like the biggest worship services ever. He had like the biggest worship services ever. Ever. If you can just play how they worship services went really quick for me, honestly. Play that in the back. They worship services. They used to be passing out over Michael Jackson. Oh, man. Look how, I mean, they slapping them. Like, slap, get up, get, get together. Like, people were fanatics for Michael Jackson. I mean, just when he turned his head, they, Michael! And like, <laughs> Michael Jackson was weird. I ain't gonna, I, I'm not gonna cap. That's a little strange. Oh, my, my bad. Somebody told me I was gonna get canceled last week. <laughs> I, oh, that was you. You said, yeah. I probably would get canceled. If I went, like, I would definitely, I would love to get canceled too. Like, I'd be happy to be canceled. You said off white. Yeah, I would love to. But people, used to idolize Michael Jackson. Like, and they don't just do that back, that wasn't just a back then thing in the 80s. It happens right now. It's actually a lot worse right now, right? Like, people be going crazy. People be going crazy. Like, little baby come in the mall area. Ah! Ah! Like, they be going wild. Like, NBA young boy come up somewhere, people be, oh, man, they, they running. They... Uh, because they fam, oh, at the Travis Scott concert, right? People was passing out over him, right? Now, they might have been hot, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, oh, I forgot. I'm not supposed to talk about rappers anymore, um, so okay. I'm not supposed to talk about them. Why not? Because people was getting upset last week Bro, that I was call, mentioning rappers Bro, and getting their name wrong and all that type he of stuff. Called, anyway, which just off-white. shows that, you know, maybe those people maybe idolize some of them. But celebrity worship is one of the worst types of idolatry. And you really have to think about it. If we think of the definition of idolatry, if you put that up for me, idolatry is a person, place, thing, or idea that takes the place of God in your life. And so let's think about it like this, Summer. I almost called you a knight because of your name tag. Let's think about it like this, Summer. This is how much people love celebrities. They will listen to their music all the time. They will buy their clothes. They'll buy their makeup. They buy their lip gloss. They buy posters and put them up in their rooms. Who got a poster of somebody else in your room? Be honest. Like, be honest. Like, be honest. Like, who got a poster of another human in your room? Like, be honest. All right. All right. All right. All right. Is it okay if it's an album cover? Album cover? Like, you just got their picture up on your wall. You got another human's picture up on your wall. Now, now, really quick, I just want to see something. Just raise that hand up high. Raise it high. Raise it high. If you have a poster, you have an album cover, you got something like that in your room of another human. Now, how many? Keep it up high. Raise it high. Raise it high. Don't be embarrassed. It's all right. I used to have it. You got a poster, an album cover, something like that in your room. Now, if you got a shirt 
of somebody else. Keep your hand, raise your hand up as well. A shirt as well that you'll be wearing out. All right, all right, all right, all right. Just raise it high, raise it high. Now, question, question. How many people in here, you have a poster that says Jesus? What about my wallpaper? Your wallpaper on your phone? Yes, my wallpaper. <laughs> How many people got a... Sh okay, y'all probably got some shirts that say some Jesus, right? All right, you got some Jesus merch? All right, you got Jesus merch. All right, all right. All right, all right. Yeah, you, we all got you. Got, yo, low key, the plug about to drop some new merch next year, and that joint about to be Ooh, fire too. It's about to be fire. New merch coming. Yeah, we'll let you look at it. All right. But people go as far to get tattoos of other celebrities on them. No, Rick Ross used to have a song, or oh, uh, was it Drake? One of them tapped my name on you, so I know it's real, right? Like people will have tattoos. And I saw. I saw somebody with yeah, Britney Spears on their Never, arm. never, never get a tattoo of your boyfriend or your girlfriend. <laughs> like, never get their name tatted on you. Don't get a picture of them on your neck. <laughs> so. Yes, I know. I'm, I've, I've seen the videos. Like, it's like, yo, what's well, up with somebody you? Somebody has a tattoo of uh, Britney so, Spears on their arm. So now listen, listen, listen. Man, I'm losing time too, ain't I? Okay, okay. We have to beware of idolatry. Let me get to this. I'm sorry, say I can't get you right now. Huh? Oh, to get a tattoo of Jesus. I mean, we don't know what Jesus really looked like. So, like, who is that picture actually of? It's going to be somebody, I mean, I'm not saying it's wrong. It's just like, is that really Jesus? <laughs> is that really how he looked? All right, we don't know. We don't know. Um, this is another definition of idolatry, and I love how this guy Tim Keller says it. An idol is anything more important to you than God. Anything that absorbed your heart and imagination more than God. And anything that you seek to give you what only God can give. Let me see that, say that last part. Anything that you seek to give you what only God can give. Remember that. Remember that. Anything that you seek to give you what only God can give you. Um... I want to go over this story really quickly in 1 Samuel, um, verse 15. And I'm going to have Summer to actually, we, we're going to read a lot of scriptures, and then I'm going to uh, give some commentary in between the scriptures, all right? So, Summer, I want you to, like, read that with a real, like, Old Testament type of feel, all right? 1 Samuel 15, verse 1. Samuel also said to Saul, the Lord sent me to anoint you over the king. The Lord sent me to anoint you king over his people Can over hear Israel. Her? Talk loud. Samuel also said to Saul, loud. the Lord sent me to anoint you king over his people over Israel. Now, therefore, heed the voice of the wo words Word. of the Lord. Okay, so Samuel was a prophet. Saul was the very, what king? First king. First king of Israel. And so Samuel anointed Saul to be the king, and the Lord put him to be king. All right? Now, let's follow with the story. This says the Talk Lord about. of hosts, I will punish Am Amalek, huh? Amalek yep. for what he did to Israel, how he ambushed him on the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and attack Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and do not spare them. Now it says what? Pay attention to what's about to be said. But kill both man and woman, infant and nursing child, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. All right. So Amalek, when the children of Israel were passing through, Amalek really tried to attack the children of Israel and didn't want them to get to the promised land, right? Like they were enemies of Israel. 
And so when Saul became king, the Lord was like, yo, I want you to go and destroy them, not just because they attacked, but they were full of idolatry, like full of idols, full of like totally against God. And so he was like, yo, kill everything that's there. Like everything. He said donkeys and camels. And I was almost like, dang, like what did they do? (laughs) Like they they ain't do nothing wrong, Lord. But listen, if the king says go do it, you're supposed to obey right? You, you obey whatever the king says. Um, so go to verse 8. No, verse 7. Start at verse 7. Go on. And Saul attacked the Amalekites. Amalekites? Amalekites. Amalekites from Havila. Havila all the way to Shore, which is east of Egypt. He also took a gag king of the Amalekites alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep, the oxen, the fatlings, the fatlings, fatlings, (laughs) the lambs and all that was good and were unwilling to utterly destroy them. But everything despised and worthless that were that they utterly destroyed. Okay, so what did they do? Who, wait, I heard somebody back there. They what? They what? They did not listen. The Lord said, kill everything, even the llamas. Kill them, right? And then it says that they took Agag, king of the Amalekites, alive. Now, that's what you would do in wartime a lot of time. You're going to take the king alive, right? But they took him alive. And it said they spared the best of the sheep, the oxen, the fatlings, the lambs, and all that was good. So they was like, yo, all the good stuff, we ain't actually about to kill it. We about to take that with us. Because back then, the more goats you had, the more lambs you had, the more oxen you had, the richer you were. Right? So that's, it. that's equivalent to us today and God telling us, like, go over to Canada and, like, burn all the money that you see. And you go into somebody's house and you see, like, a million stacked up. Right? And it's like, Lord, come on, Lord. You want me to burn that? Like, let me just take a couple. Let me just take a little bit of it. Right? The temptation. Right? But the Lord said, kill everything. And they disobeyed. Y'all following the story, right? Y'all following? All right. Verse 10, go. Now the word, the word of God of the Lord came to Samuel saying, I greatly regret that I have set up Saul as king, for he has turned back from following me and has not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel. And he cried out to the Lord all night. So when Samuel rose early in the morning to meet Saul, it was told Samuel saying, Saul went to, Saul went to Carmel, and indeed he set up a monument for himself. All right, perfect. So the Lord was very upset. And he said, yo, I regret that I even made this man king. Now, that has to be something hurtful for the Lord to say, like, yo, I regret that I made them a leader over something. That's, like, for the Lord to say that he regrets that, that's not good at all, right? And so he's like, the Lord's like, I'm about to pull him down from being the king. He's no longer going to be the king because he did not listen, all right? Now it says this, verse, wow, they're done with service. Okay, let's hurry up. (laughs) Okay. Wow, like I feel like we just started. (laughs) All right, (coughs) let's skip down. I'm going to summarize. Let me summarize the story. (coughs) So, Saul ended up going and talking to Samuel, and Saul was happy like, yes, we defeated him. I did everything that you told us to do, and, Saul, and Samuel was like, shut up. He literally said, be quiet. Like, how are you going to say that and I hear sheep 
making noise in the background right now. Shut up, right? And Samuel was like, when you were little in your own eyes, you were not head of the tribes of Israel, and did not the Lord anoint you king? And then pretty much um, Saul was like, well, yo, we took all of the goats, we took all of the lamb, we took all of those things so we can make an offering to the Lord. Now, remember back in the day how they used to make offerings and sacrifices? They would, I mean, this is kind of weird for us today, but they would take animals and burn them, right? Like they would sacrifice the animals. And some of the vegans in this room like, oh, my goodness, oh, my Lord, right? But that's how they would sacrifice them as a way to honor God, right? And this was like very normal back in the day. That was very normal for people to do that. And so he was like, yo, we took all of the good animals and the oxen and all that stuff so that we could sacrifice to the Lord. The Lord would love if we did that, right? No. Incorrect completely, right? Um, then verse 22 says, Samuel said, has the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices? As in obeying the Lord's voice, behold, to obey is better than to sacrifice. To be obedient to the Lord is better to sacrifice offerings or to give your money or to come to church. To obey is better than all of those things. Obedience is really important to the king. It's like vitally important. He was going to take one of the kings down because he was not obedient. Then it says this. Can y'all hear me? Okay. A little bit? Am I Mike, go out. Okay. All right. You tripping. Put your mic a little bit up. No? Oh. All right. I'm not tripping. All right. So Samuel said, oh, all right, all right, all right. Now, verse 23, this is the verse I wanted to get to. You all listen to this verse. This is deep. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity of idolatry. Then it says, because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you from being king. And then Saul was like, at this point, he realized what happened, and he started like, apolog- like, no, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry, my apologies, I repent, I repent. And he grabbed on to the prophet's robe, right? He grabbed onto the robe as he's on the ground graveling, and the prophet, like, grabbed his stuff, and he ripped it out of his hands. The robe ripped out of his hands, right? And he said, just as if, just as you ripped my robe, the Lord has ripped the kingdom away from you. Right? Like the bars, like that was like bars on point, right? Like just like you ripped my robe, the Lord is ripping the kingdom away from you. And so he's there crying. He was repentant. He was sorry for what he did, but he still lost the kingdom. The Lord is not pleased with disobedience. And it says this, for rebellion, being the rebel against God, is the same thing as witchcraft. You know, like witches, warlocks, you know, like casting spells on people, you know, like doing things that are totally against God, which for some reason it's like cool to be a witch nowadays. Like, I don't know why. Have y'all like seen them on TikTok and stuff? Like the witches be cool. Nah? I, y'all ain't never seen that? Thank you, Sarah, for the one person that ag- agreeing with me. Yeah, like, like, witches are cool. Like, me and my wife met one, and she was, like, very cool. proud to be one, too. Like, no, I'm not saying they're cool. Like, no, we didn't. We met her at the park, you know, and she wasn't dressed up in no spooky hat. She was wearing normal clothes because she told us she was a witch. Well, she told Eliza she was a witch, and she was proud to be a witch. Mm. You know, um, Tom Brady's wife, Tom Brady's wife is a very proud witch. Tom Brady is the best football player that ever lived. <laughs> right? Don't make me. His wife was a witch. So, and if you go look up ex-wife, my bad, ex-wife, 
was a witch. And so this thing is very popular, but the scripture says, some of you all, who in here like would practice witchcraft? Like you interested in practicing witchcraft? Nah, absolutely not, right? But it says rebellion against God is the same exact thing as witchcraft. So when you rebel against God, you're going into witchcraft. Then it says stubbornness is as idolatry. When you're stubborn against the things that God is telling you to do, and God is saying go this way, and you know he's telling you to go this way, but you're fighting against it. You're stubborn against what God is telling you to do. It's saying that that is idolatry. Stubbornness is idolatry to the Lord. When you don't go the way that he wants you to go, and you're rebelling and you're stubborn, you are in witchcraft and you are in idolatry. And we both know that those people will not inherit the kingdom of God. And so what we want to really do is check ourselves internally. We have to check ourselves before you wreck yourself. Check yourself before you wreck yourself, right? Because if we don't want to, if we want to dare be in witchcraft, and witchcraft is also tarot card readings. Witchcraft is also crystals, horoscopes, palm readings. Witchcraft is also, you know, uh, lining up your chakras for the energy and the vibrational patterns. Witchcraft is also, yes, witchcraft is also astrology, right? Witchcraft, these are all forms of witchcraft, smudging, right? And why is this witchcraft? Why is this wrong to the Lord? Because remember what Tim Keller said, anything that you look, let me go back, let me go back. Anything that you seek to give you what only God can give is idolatry. So why do people seek a lot of those different things? People seek, people burn the sage so that they can have peace in their home to get rid of the demons. I'm going to let you know right now, ain't no burning, no type of plant going to get rid of a demon. I'm, I'm letting you know right now, no matter how much sage, you could buy all the sage in the world and have a bonfire. It's not going to get rid of a demon or any bad energy. What is going to get rid of, yeah, it's going to invite more demons, right? They're going to be like, oh, yeah, I like that smell, right? And they're and they going to run right over there to it, right? Supersonic speed. <laughs> meditation. Medi- because if you think, he said it's meditation, a form of witchcraft and idolatry. Let's think about it, right? Let's think about it. You, if the root is bad, the fruit is bad. If the root is bad, the fruit is bad. Where does meditation come from? When they're sitting there and saying, um, um, where does that practice come from? Um, Those are chakras which comes from what? Buddhism. Which are the same things that are in the Chinese stores with, that have the big bellies and they sit there and people worship and they put stuff there. So my question is this, why would you involve yourself with something that is an enemy of God and think that that's going to be cool or okay? Why would you do that when you could go to creator himself? Now, 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 good point, good point. Now, Taharia said this, well, because the word of God says meditate as well, right? The word of God says meditate, but the meditation that most people think of when they're sitting there doing, like, that's not the same meditating on the Word of God. When the Word of God says, in, in the Psalms or Proverbs, it talks about meditating on the Word of God. It's talking about, yeah, day and night, right? So that you will be like a tree planted by the rivers of flowing water. It's saying that you're supposed to constantly just be thinking about God's Word, constantly thinking about what He's telling you to do, constantly thinking about it. Something else, I, ooh, this, this is going to really mess up some people, and I know some of y'all parents do this, and they, I'm going to get some emails about this, but even, even yoga, yoga is like, tell that to my mama, she be trying to make me do yoga, like, 
If you look at the, now, is stretching your body bad? No, no. But you have to realize a lot of those poses, doing downward dog, and those poses are actually, yoga comes from those positions are actually positions of worship to their God. You could go look it up. Like, I, don't take my word for it. Just go look it up. Just go look it up. And so, is stretching your body wrong? No. No, it's not wrong to stretch your body. It's good to stretch. But what you do want to be aware of is like, the Lord had to correct me because I stretch. And so I was watching this lady that was doing stretches and stuff like that. And in the video, I'm seeing idols within the, I see a Buddha in the video, right? And as she's talking, she's talking real new ages, you know? Like, let's align ourselves correctly. And I'm like, man, forget all that. Like, I'm going to just ignore that part, but she got some good stretches that were difficult that I needed to stretch with. But the Lord got on me personally about that, and I had to stop watching those completely because it's like you're engaging yourself with these same things. And I don't want to, only thing I want to engage myself with is the Lord. Like, that's the only thing. And so a lot of times, if the root is bad, the fruit is bad. We don't want to be involved with things like that. But these are things that you should pray about yourself. Go look it up yourself. Don't take my word for it. All right? Now, we got to close. If idolatry is the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as idolatry, we have to really think to ourselves, what areas are we rebelling against God? What areas do we have witchcraft against God in our life? What areas are, do we have idols up in our life as well that we're stubborn against what God is telling us to do? Now, let's be honest. With a raise of hands, how many people are like, it's some things that I'm just like, I'm stubborn and I'm a rebel against certain things that God is telling me to do. Just be honest. Be, be honest. Be honest. I think a lot of us can raise our hands, right? A lot of us, let, like, we could all be honest. And so... What we want to do is get every area that is opposite of God in our life, we want to get that right with him. There's even areas in my life right now that I have to go and repent and I have to pray to God about as well. There's areas that, Nehem, I, I'm going before the Lord like, okay, Lord, yeah, I, I definitely had an idol up right here. So it doesn't mean that we're wrong people. But it means which way are you going? Are you going to the Lord about those things or are you going the opposite way? So what we'd have to do is just make a decision.